Hi everyone, I'm here to do my March book haul. I don't remember the last time I did a book haul. I used to do them a lot during the days of book blogging, like about a decade ago. Super old! Um, it's actually ridiculous to think how long I've been like involved in the bookish online world. Um, but so here I am um, and I'm gonna disclose to you the ridiculous amount of books that came into my house in March considering it was the month after the London Bookshop Crawl during which I also bought a ridiculous amount of books um, and I was supposed to be being restrained but as somebody on Twitter said books are one of the few things we're actually allowed to buy at the moment so I'm letting myself off the hook. Um, some of these were sent by publishers, some are um part of specific things um some i don't remember how they came to be in my house so <laughs> here we go um i'm gonna start off by talking about a uh, pledge that i made this year so if you follow me on twitter you've probably seen this because it's my pin post at the moment but i said back at the end of december that as long as my income supported it during 2021 every month i would buy a book from an indie publisher and a book from an indie bookshop um so i've been doing that and the first book that arrived in March was actually a pre-order that I ordered in February. So as I mentioned, February was the month of the London Bookshop crawl, so I obviously bought a lot of books from London bookshops. So to kind of counterbalance that, I wrapped up my indie publisher purchase and my indie bookshop purchase for February into one pre-order of Show Us Who You Are by Elle McNichol, which is published by Knights Of, so that's an indie children's uh, publisher. I'll put the details for them in the description box. Um, and I ordered that from the Barrister in Wonderland bookshop, which I will also link to in the description so you can go check it out because it's a lovely looking children's bookshop, not in London. So that arrived very early on in March. I have already read it and loved it. My blog post is super delayed. Um, it was our March book of the month though, so if you get our newsletter, it was in our last newsletter. So you should check your inboxes for that. That was also super delayed for reasons out of my control. Um, I'm not used to having my hair down. It's very fluffy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Show Us Who You Are by Elle McNichol. Uh, Elle McNichol's books both have um, autistic girls as their main characters. Um, I think I also talked about this a little bit in my March reading um, log that I was my last video I put up so you can check that out for more about Show Us Who You Are but I loved that um, and that was uh, my February purchase that arrived in the first week of March. So also as part of this I had a subscription to um, a non-fiction subscription from Bookish Bookshop in Wales. Um, and this was the last month of that, so I'm deciding whether to renew that next month. I might do, because I really enjoyed having it. It's really nice having someone else choose your books for you. Um, small plug for our pre-love subscription where we do that for you. <laughs> but no, this was really nice. I've ended up with three very different um, non-fiction books that I wouldn't have chosen for myself, but all of which are things that I'm interested in. So the one I got this month is uh, Letters to the Earth, which is introduced by Emma Thompson and illustrated by Jackie Morris. Um, I'm going to read you the blurb just because it's fun to know what books are about. Um, now that we know the truth about the climate crisis, how should we respond? The book you're holding offers a starting point. In its pages, you will find letters from all of us, parents and children, artists and activists, scientists and politicians, words that heal and words that challenge. These letters were written in response to an invitation, one that is extended to each one of us as we grapple with the future of our planet. The beginning of a new story and a new relationship between humanity and this place we call home. Creation is the antidote to despair. I might just put that on a t-shirt. Creation is the antidote to despair. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, that's a very uh, inspiring thing for me at the moment because I'm obviously working on a load of hopeful things because our crowdfunder for the Little Box of Hope potentially will be live and running when you see this so do go and check that out if you haven't already i'm just gonna be plugging myself all the way through i'm sorry i can't i can't not it's like an instinctive thing but anyway that's um letters to the earth and i really uh recommend you going over and checking out bookish and all their subscriptions um if you would like to have new books rather than pre-loved subscriptions um because they are really good at choosing books and they've got a massive range of different things you can choose from so yeah check them out i'll leave the link in the description uh okay so keeping on with the bookshop pledge, um, I ordered another non-indie book from an indie bookshop this month and I finally have given it into everyone in the world's recommendations that I read Mary Oliver. I ordered this from the Portobello bookshop because I literally googled indie bookshop Mary Oliver and that was what came up. So that was a nice way to make a decision about where to buy uh, a book from this month. And this is A Thousand Mornings. Mary Oliver is a, was a, she's uh, passed away. She was a Pulitzer Prize winning poet and she's very often quoted, so you probably will know some of her poetry without knowing that you know it. This is beautiful. It's been really nice to just read a poem or two every morning. It's really little, because poetry collections are usually little. You can see, because I'm a terrible dog era, where I've got to. Sorry, 
I'm sorry if like dog earring really is a problem for you. <laughs> I dog ear all the time, I'm so terrible. Um, but yeah, so that was uh, ordered from Portobello Bookshop and that's A Thousand Mornings by Mary Oliver, which was my indie bookshop purchase for March. Uh, my indie publisher purchase for March hasn't arrived yet, but I'm just gonna tell you about it quickly here because I'm talking about my pledge. Um, so it is basically the first day I was back on Instagram after my social media break, I saw this post and I was like, oh, that looks really interesting, check that out. So this is published by And Other Stories. And it's called, I've just made some notes, so I'm looking at my notes because I have a terrible memory and I want to get everything right. It's called, This is How We Come Back Stronger, Feminist Writers on Turning Crisis into Change. And it's basically responses to 2020, to the pandemic and everything that's going on at the moment, it has been going on for the last year. And it collects fiction, interviews and essays. Um, and it's a whole range of people writing. I'm really excited to get that. It should be on its way to me at the moment and it's also a really good thing to support because 20% of the profits from the book go to women's aid and a charity called IMCAM which I had to look up um, but it's a women's organisation dedicated to addressing violence against black and mi uh, minoritised women so that's based in the UK um, and I really like to support books that are doing good. I think it sounds like a really interesting thought-provoking necessary subject and I'm really happy to support uh, something that is supporting charities. As you know, we support charities with our, our box. Um, we support a charitable partner give a book. And I am obsessed with social change and making a difference. And it's one of the ways that I make myself feel less insignificant. <laughs> Crushing despair. Uh, no, we're not going to get into that. But it is one of the ways that I like keep myself hopeful about things. So that's really good. And um, that's, this is how we come back stronger. And you can order that now from And Other Stories. I'll leave the link in the description. And that was my indie publisher purchase for March. Okay, moving along. Um, I bought myself, no, my husband bought me actually. I didn't even buy this one. Um, we discovered a new to us indie press, which is always fun when that happens because it's usually ones that like everyone knows about and I somehow have missed, which is slightly confidence destroying when you spend a lot of your time researching indie publishers and thinking you know everything but you know it's always good for us to realize we don't know everything anyway gonna stop rambling um this is a publisher you can find out a lot more about on youtube if you search for them a lot of people have made videos about them and um, this is dean street press and this is the witness on the roof by annie haynes um so i'm just going to quickly read you the blurb um dean street press are a publisher not dissimilar to persephone books and the british library women writers series so they kind of take uh, out of print forgotten women writers and we we issue them um so the blurb of this says little polly spencer liked to visit her hiding place up on the london rooftops to escape a scolding or worse from her stepmother peeping through a studio window she sees what looks like a burglary but signs of robbery are merely a cover for murder and the young figure on the roof seemingly the only witness to the crime polly is sent to live with her well-born mother's family her secret kept from the police more than a decade later she has become lady Worcester, the wife of a wealthy titled man yet in a world utterly removed from her childhood she will finally face the pale-faced killer she glimpsed through the window all those years ago and the danger of having seen too much is about to become acute that sounds really good <laughs> sounds really good um so yeah, we kind of bought this for research purposes to see if this was a publisher that maybe we could work with going forwards because we know that we have a lot of subscribers who really enjoy um, this kind of historical um, forgotten women writer kind of feel um, and they like to discover that kind of um, that kind of writer. So I will let you know. I will feedback about this. Um, that's The Witness on the Roof by Annie Haynes, a golden age mystery. Okay. Um, and then, okay. Um, one that turned up at the beginning of the month and I had completely forgotten that I'd supported them. I think I got this for supporting the publisher as they began. This is a brand new indie, so shout out for the brand new indie, go and check them out. This is Weatherglass Books and this is Cold New Climate by Isabel Wall. I'm going to read you the blurb because it sounds really interesting. And um, so the, the way I buy books is I just really like to support indies. So if they're doing a crowdfunder or they're like shouting out, asking people to subscribe or purchase a certain title and I have like income that month to do it then I will usually buy stuff so often I don't actually know what a book is about when it turns up in my house but this sounds really good so here's the blurb Lydia is unsettled in her New York life she takes herself away to Greece secure in the belief her much older partner Tom will be there on her return when she arrives back she discovers he's fallen in love with someone else her life in disarray Lydia faces a future in which nothing is secure when she reconnects with Tom's teenage son Caleb I keep saying that Caleb it's Caleb in English sorry all three lives are recast in shocking and devastating ways all the while we sense that in the world at large there are greater changes happening over which they have even less control. Sorry, the first Caleb I ever knew um, is Caleb because 
it's an Italian name and that's how they pronounce it. So I always default to Caleb, even though it's Caleb in English. Um, so sorry about that. Um, it's Caleb. That's Cold New Climate by Isabel Wall. And that's Weather Glass Books, so a brand new indie. So do go check them out. I'll leave the links and you can order the book from them. Directly it comes with a lovely bookmark, which I'm actually using in something else, which I'll show you in a minute. But <laughs> Which is amazing for me because I never use bookmarks. So I always just dog it. That, um, so that's that, that's that one. Okay, and the last thing I bought this month... Okay, not quite the last thing, almost the last thing. The last thing I physically have here to show you that I bought was actually the last thing I bought from the London Bookshop call, but it took a little while to arrive. So it's arrived in March and that is The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman, who some of you will probably know from Pointless. He's also great on Twitter. I've heard a lot about this and I bought it from Crofton Books during the London Bookshop call. Um, and it's uh, a murder mystery, kind of cosy with like for old people solving murders so <laughs> i've heard really mixed things about this some people really love it some people were like expecting a lot more of it and it didn't quite live up to the hype for them so i'm going to go in with middling expectations and i will let you know probably on instagram um what i think about this because it's not indie so i won't i won't obviously devote too much platform space to it because we champion the indies but yeah that's the thursday murder club by richard osman um okay and then other things i was sent by publishers this month i was sent lots of things which is very exciting. Um, a few Indie Book Network titles, which I will mention, are, um, so I was sent by Seven Arches Press, um, Time Traveller Danny and the Code Breaker by Paul Morris, and Atlanta Tully Time Traveller by Brian Tyra and Jane Schaefer. Um, and they're both kind of kids' books uh, about kids saving the world and time travellers and code breaking and stuff like that so they sound really interesting um i may be reviewing them myself or i may be um sending them to someone to review for the indie book network so do watch out on our blog for reviews of those and thank you very much to seven arches press for sending those and okay then i was sent another kids book which i've started reading already and really enjoying um which is published by little tiger who are another kids indie publisher and it is agent cyber investigates the haunted house by annabelle sammy um and it's just kind of fun it's like um, about a girl called Zyber um, and she has like a detective agency and her friend who's new in town um, her mum thinks that their house is haunted so they're kind of investigating to see what they can find out about that at the moment um, and it's really kind of light and, and a lot of fun so I will be reviewing that as well on the Indie Book Network look out for that I'm excited that I get to read some more kids fiction at the moment because it's been a long time since I've read a lot of that. Right, um, on the very other end of the spectrum <laughs> from this, I'm also reading, um, sent over by Dog Section Press, Abolishing the Police, which is a collection of pieces um, on abolishing the police. So it's got all sorts of things about um, the different ways that the police um were set up like what they were set up in response to ways they operate and all the different reasons um kind of why we should possibly view the police force with quite a lot of caution and um look into maybe other ways of keeping order in society so this is really interesting because this is a subject that i would never really thought about too much being a person who is generally feels like the police keep them safe which is obviously a very privileged position to be in. Um, and I hadn't, to my shame, really thought about the way that policing negatively affects different communities. I mean, I grew up in London and I was aware of like Stephen Lawrence as a name, but not really like anything to do with what went on with that. I've been aware of various things that have happened in London, but privilege, has let me not really engage with that and so I'm really interested in this book because I am thinking more deeply about this as a subject and as something that maybe we need to be engaging much more with in society. We need to maybe be thinking about why the institutions that we have are there and what who they're there to protect and who they're there to enforce what they're there to enforce and how they're doing it and what we need to be questioning about that. Um, so yeah, this is a really good collection so far. It's really interesting and it's really accessible. So it's written, um, they, there's a whole thing in the introduction about using academic language, but they explain a lot of it. So if you are not a person who is familiar with a lot of different terms and a terminology, then you can still read this book because they've provided a glossary to go with it. They've also um, spent a lot of effort explaining different terms in the context of the piece so it doesn't feel like you're just reading a dictionary. It's all very well woven in. Um, so it's a really good place to start, I think. I would really recommend this. I'm going to be, I've only read a little bit of it so far, 
but I'm going to be reviewing this on the blog as well, so watch out for that. Okay, I'm going to speed through the last bit. I've got a couple more things to tell you about. I was also sent some lovely books by um, the publicist at Dawn Publishing, um, and I was sent these two. Uh, Map of Another Town by MFK Fisher, which is travel writing about uh, France, which is lovely so far. And Family Lexicon by Natalia Ginsberg, um, which is uh, fiction. And yeah, really enjoying both of those. Can't say too much more about them because of secrets. <laughs> but thank you very much to Daunt Books Publishing for sending those to me. And then a couple more things. Finally, I want to tell you about that I bought or supported just quickly at the end here. So I um, have no willpower when it comes to books. So when I saw that Duck Feet by Ellie Percy was uh, on offer for five pounds from Monstrous Regiment, I had to order it. Um, this is, I'm just gonna quickly read the blurb I've written down because I don't have it yet, it hasn't arrived. Um, but so it follows the life of 12 year old Kirsty Campbell and her friends as they navigate life from first to sixth year at Renfrew Grammar School. Um, and I don't really know anything about it besides that, um, except that I know that it's part of the push there has been recently to publish more stories by working class writers, publish more stories with working class characters um, and kind of hear less from the middle class that we've heard a lot from. <laughs> so I will probably be reviewing that as well. So look out for that. And then the last thing I wanted to mention was 404 Inc's crowdfunder for their Inklings collection. They've absolutely smashed their target, but you should still definitely go and support them. Um, the Inklings are little books about big ideas. And the idea is such a clever name. The idea is that they've touched on all these subjects that you might have an inkling about, but not know very much about. And they've got all kinds of things from like, um, there's one about growing up living between two cultures. Uh, there's one about women in hip hop. There's one about Prince, the singer, performer. Um, all kinds of things. So you should definitely go check that out. You can choose one or you can get the whole collection. You can get digitally print. There's all kinds of things because it's a crowdfunder. Um, I'll leave the link in the description and you can check that out. We are launching our crowdfunder. Probably by the time you see this, we have launched it. I will link that in the description too. Um, it's the little box of hope. So it's designed to be hopeful positivity through your door. Uh, indie books, small business made, money to charity, as usual, as usual. Uh, <laughs> So please do check that out because we really need your support. Obviously, it's all or nothing. If we don't get the uh, target that we want, we don't get any money. So, uh, yeah, we'd love you to support that too. Um, I'll leave links to everything I've discussed in the description. And thank you if you have stuck with me to the end of my haul. I got a lot of books this month. <laughs> Let me know if you've read any of them in the comments, what I should start with, what you're excited about um, from my haul. If you have done your own March haul videos, please leave them because I'd love to see them. I really want to make more time to watch booktube videos at the moment um although who knows because it's easter holidays and my kids will be home again um but yeah so thank you for watching this and please subscribe if you haven't already um and share this video uh like etc etc and i will see you again soon for another one bye